Well, it's cold outside, and we're gonna talk about um, what I like about each one of these skillets here. They're all handmade from American makers, which is cool, and not everyone has these or knows about this. So I'm just gonna share a little about each one and what I like about it. What do you think? No? All right, see ya. Uh, this is the Northwest Skillet Company 12 inch skillet. I got this as a birthday gift a few years ago. Uh, you can see their maker's mark. This is an Oregon maker there. And they do helper handles on the side and their signature thing seems to kind of be like these cool handle designs. This one's called Grand Ronde, I believe. You see like a twist there and that little loop circle there so you can like hang it up if you want. I'll give you a little peek at the mounting. Now these are a little lighter and thinner, so if you're wanting something that heats faster but might not retain heat quite as much as my other ones, this is gonna be a good fit for you or if you just want something lighter that's more maneuverable. Uh, I think that uh, these, uh, I can't remember the forging technique here, but judging on his YouTube videos, um, there's like some kind of wheel and spinning machine. Go, go take a look, Northwest Skillet Company. Uh, next one's a bigger company. I got this as a gift from my grandmother, if you're watching, hello. Uh, this is the Smithy Farmhouse 12 inch. She got the uh, quail stamp there in the handle. It kind of reminds me of a Harry Potter broomstick a little bit. This one's a very smooth pan, great for like slidey eggs or searing proteins. One thing to note is it's low profile, so splatter can be an issue here, but it is absolutely beautiful. The hand hammer marks all over the edge and their signature uh, three holes on the end there, if you're familiar with Smithy products. I'll give you one more look at that broomstick handle. Each one of these kind of looks a little different too. They don't all look the same because they're all done by hand. There's that Smithy stamp at the bottom. All right, first one I want to show you as a native Texan uh, is three nail ironware. Uh, the surface on this one is relatively matte and durable. It doesn't seem to scratch super easily if that bothers you. You also have no rivets in here. They've been countersunk and pounded flat there so that seasons really easily. Handle feels really good to the thumb here and comes with this little loop design here and they have their maker mark. If you can see it right there on the bottom. Uh, if anyone knows what that means, uh, please let me know. Uh, and they even stamp it with the uh, maker's name and date. Mine says uh, Kaiser 1121. So this one's almost three years old, two and a half years old. This is a Blanc Creatives uh, 12 inch, 13 inch roasting pan. Their maker's mark is a little bit sneaky on this one. It's right here in the handle. I don't know if you can see the BC right there, but this one's great. I got this one for sliding into the uh, pizza oven out back and cooking meats uh, on this service. The, the uh, foragers themselves told me that it's okay to use this in a pizza oven. They do the same thing with theirs. Uh, they're based out of Virginia. I actually have a second piece. So this is the roaster again. Oh, you can take a look at the textured handles there. Simple, practical piece. And I'll move this one off to the side. And you might have seen this one before if you're into this kind of thing. This is their Pro Skillet. This is the Heritage model with the hammered textured walls. Let's see if I can give you a good look at that here. You can kind of see how the light hits all those little sections on the side there. It's pretty smooth on the bottom here, not sanded or anything. I'm a big fan of the handle. Like they have texturing all on the edges of it here. Let's see if I can give you a good shot of that. And uh, I really like their fork design. But this one feels really good. There's their maker mark right there, BC. And uh, this one's really good for maneuverability. The handle leverage feels pretty good on this one. Easy to move on the stove. And uh, if you're looking for something that's comfortable to use with a smooth surface, this might be a good choice for you. This. Now this is quite a piece of art here. Uh, this is a very special piece I got myself uh, for finishing my contest at my uh, school last year. This is a Athena, I believe it's 
It's been a while. It's their Omni Artisan skillet with what's called a Gaia handle. I'll show you what that means. So this is their surface here. It's like kind of scratchy and stuff. Like it's like it's been wire brushed or something, which I actually really like. So I don't have to worry about scuffing anything up. It's already like pre-roughed and it holds seasoning better because of it being kind of pre-roughed. I don't know if you can see some of those kind of scratchy things. It feels really nice too. But when you flip this over, you get these beautiful fluted edges here, which are very special. Now what this causes is the sidewalls to heat up a little faster as well as it kind of takes a little bit of mass out of the pan, keeps the bottom heavier. And here is the forked handle and its attachment here. It goes with kind of like this two rod design. And here is the Gaia handle design right here. Those kind of curly cues right there. <clears throat> I think I've had to season them like one time. It wasn't like a super big deal. I just kind of dipped it and dried it off as best I could. But overall, this one's really, really beautiful. I will say these rods do heat up a little bit. So for me, this is like a set it on the stove and don't mess with it kind of pan. Just let it sit there. And if I do have to handle it, if it's on there for a while, I'll probably need like an oven mitt when this gets warm. And you can also see where I'm grabbing it. Like there's not a whole lot of clearance here. And the leverage isn't quite as good as the other ones. But this is really, really beautiful. Definitely take a look at um, Athena skillets. I'll show you their maker's mark as well. Got that artisan stamp on there. Nice work that they're doing. Uh, I have some of the blue skillet ironware pieces from uh, Seattle. This is like the OG of the handmade ones, or at least like the most famous one. America's Test Kitchen featured them a few years ago when they covered carbon steel skillets, but you see all those pretty hammer texture on the wall. When you receive this, is actually a nice light blue. You can still see a bit of that color in their handle and their designs pretty unique as well. You do have to enter a lottery to buy one of these, uh, or they have an online sale once a year. If you're quick with the clicking and your wallet, you can pick one of these up. But these are nice and thick, and the handle leverage feels really good on these two. Uh, there's definitely a lot of like, you know, form through, the, through their own artistic process that's kind of evolved over time. And I also have their 10 inch. French skillet, this was the first piece of theirs I got, and it's actually my favorite steak pan right now, like for just one big old ribeye. It sits nicely in there, and these retaining walls, this is their French skillet, if I didn't say so, a little higher so that it doesn't like splatter everywhere or leak. It's good for uh, butter basting. You can um, set it in there, tilt it back, and everything accumulates here, and you can just baste away. It's really comfortable in the hands too, very maneuverable. It's that Nice angle of the handle there. And moving on. And this is my first piece I ever got from the hand forged uh, American makers. I actually polished this up the other day. So what this is, uh, I believe this was mostly cold hammered. This was all done by hand with a fly press. This was before the this maker even had a, uh, um, what do you call it, a hydraulic press. So this was all done like by hand, by hand, all hammered out. And you can see the evidence of that all through here. He's evolved this process quite a bit, but as you can see, this one stands out for its copper handles. Uh, it has a fully sandblasted uh, surface here, which I don't think he does that exactly that way anymore, but I noticed it like holds seasoning really well. It's like almost like this beautiful matte, like glassy feel, very forgiving surface. Like you don't have to worry too much about scratching it or anything because of that sandblasting. Uh, copper handles are attached to the pan with these leaf. Let me see if I can get you a good shot of this. Uh, there we go. That is a leaf right there. Something really unique about his designs that caught my eye. And at the time, he was just doing this with a power hammer and um, annealing the copper to uh, twist it like this. And he used to have to um, engrave these leaves like one hammer stroke at a time. So that gives like a special air of uniqueness and soul to it. But I, I still use this one pretty often. Like you can also see like more evidence of like it's hand making thing. Like the handle here is slightly offset from this right here from the helper handle. This one has a lot of character. And I imagine I'll have it for probably forever. I mean, these, these things don't exactly wear out. So 
uh, let me know uh, which one of these you want to see in action. Let me know if you want me to pit any of them against each other and tell you what I think. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to um, oblige requests. Just put uh, what, which one was your favorite looking one in the comments. And um, yeah, if you like this stuff, just let me know. See ya.